the testimony of if God is for you, who can be against you? This has been a round of the century. I was not supposed to win this. So now you guys are listening because we did win. And I can glorify God the way I want to glorify him. Welcome, welcome, welcome to another episode of 3D Boxing Podcast. It, it's good to be back. Uh, late night stream today. Um, Going to get into what Eddie Hearn said in the post-fight press conference that um, uh, on Berlanger and Quigley. Uh, but before we do, please like, share, and subscribe. Follow 3D Boxing, 3D Boxing blog on all forms of social media. Uh, quick hits comes at you every day, twice a day. Well, not twice a day anymore, once a day to keep you up to date on the latest, greatest boxing news and rumors. Um, uh, please also subscribe to our other channel, Texas Boxing Scene on YouTube. That's Texas Boxing Scenes, completely dedicated to Texas boxing. Uh, all proceeds go to autism research and recovery. Um, all right, let's get into today's show. Um, so... Obviously, Berlanger signed with Matchroom, and they announced the June 24th fight between um, Berlanger and Quigley, and, and and that was met with an ire of frustration and, and disappointment and, and from boxing fans who were calling it all types of duck and um, all this extra business. And, and I, I want to get into that because I find that interesting. So on the same day that boxing fans are irate over uh, – Berlanger and Quigley. Um, they're celebrating Shakur Stevenson, who's 20-0, 20 25 years old, uh, two-division champion, fighting a guy they've never heard of. I want – he's all types of special, all types of gifted. He's the best pure boxer since Floyd Mayweather. Because he beat a guy you never heard of. On the same day, Berlanga, an overrated prospect, gets Jason Quigley, who will be the toughest fight of his career by a mile. You, you guys see the problem here? Uh, you just called Shakur, not, not, not you, theoretically you, called um, Shakur Stevenson. The best boxer in the world because he beat a guy whose name you can't even say, who you've never heard of, never seen, and probably will never see again. But Berlanga, a prospect who's not all that great, who's not exactly setting the world on fire, gets the gets a step up fight. I mean, it's so weird and bizarre the way boxing fans respond to things. Um, look, Berlanga is not a world beater. He's not a top five. Super middleweight, he's not a top 10 super middleweight. He's probably not a top 20 super middleweight. Although that, you know, we, maybe maybe he's a top 20 super middleweight. You're really starting to go through the names, and he's really not a part of that group. He's really beaten no one. Canelo Alvarez, David Benavidez, um, Caleb Plant, right? Uh, David Morrell. I mean, uh, guys like Gangora. I, uh, Ali Akhmadev, uh, Zach Parker, um, the, the, the other Cuban, uh, Osalis Iglesias, right? Um, th there are so many guys. Gabe Rosado would beat him, right? There are so many guys that would beat him right now. Diego Pacheco, Giovanni De Carlos. I'm just going through the names here. There are so many. I, I would take the Italian I did show on Ivan Zuko over him. There are so many names right now who, who you could beat, who, who he could face. Um, so many guys who are better than Edgar Belanga right now. It's just not that. And Eddie Hearn said in a post in, in, in the post fight press conference, someone asked him, you know, in, in the at the band fight about Quigley, and that's when I walked into the press conference, and Eddie said that it's the best fighter he's ever faced, and you kind of you know. Just make a mental note of, of, of his opponents. Who has Berlanga fought? And it's not even close. Jason Quigley is a major step up for Edgar Berlanga. So 
It is. And if you disagree, you can go through his resume and find me one guy on his resume. The only one you could potentially give me is his last fight, Angulo, which I thought, uh, Romer Alexis Angulo, which I thought was uh, his best performance. But besides that, he's got Steve Rolls, no good, right? Demond Nicholson, and no one else. Nothing even decent on his resume. So, Jason Quigley dog walks anyone on that resume, I would say. Angulo being the possible lone exception, but Quigley's better than... If Quigley fought Angulo, you know you'd bet on Quigley. If you had to put a bet on that fight, you know you'd bet on Quigley. So, it, it seems ridiculous that Quigley is the best guy he's faced, but Quigley is the best guy he's faced. Super middleweight is not the most loaded division, but it's very, very top heavy, right? If you start putting Golovkin in there and certain guys at 68, if Charlo goes up there, he's probably not in the top 20. As shape right now, he's probably somewhere around 15 to 20, you know, just looking at the landscape of the division. Um, but that's what, but that's what he is. Like, I don't understand. Andre obviously is better than him, right? So, um, Why are people upset that Belanger is taking a step up fight while celebrating Shakur Stevenson, who's a pound for pound cat, one of the best fighters in the world? They're celebrating him for being a nobody at this stage of his career. Edgar Belanger is in the midst of becoming a contender who will fall short against A level fighters. Shakur Stevenson is in the midst of a Hall of Fame pound-for-pound run. And you're okay with him fighting a bum, but not Berlanga fighting a, the biggest opponent of his life? Berlanga, um, Quigley, has better names on his resume than the guy that Shakur Stevenson just beat, who you never heard of till three days ago. I, I, do you, are, you, are y'all upset that y'all fell for the hype machine that top rank created. And I didn't understand this in the first place when top rank was hyping this guy up and y'all were like, he could be Canelo. Cause he knocked out Eric moon. Come on, come on, bro. Like I didn't understand. I didn't see what everyone was talking about. The best thing he had going for him was Andre Rozier. Like, what is so good about him? Right? No one can really... And he knocks everyone out in the first round. Like, this is the same conversation I have with people when I, I say DeJounte Murray is a better defensive point guard than uh, Marcus Smart. And they go, Marcus Smart made all defensive first team. Marcus Smart was, was defensive player of the year. Okay, so what does he do better defensively? Not who does the media like better. Not who does the media... Four on over more, which is how you win defensive play of the year, right? What does he do better? He won defensive play. You haven't told me anything about how he plays basketball or how he plays defense, right? Edgar Belanger, what does he do good? He gets a lot of first-round knockouts. Okay, what does he do good? Uh, he gets a lot of first-round knockouts. Against who? Against good fighters? Against A-level fighters? Against B-level fighters? No. Against journeymen. You see what I'm saying? And, and, and then he gets a real opponent. And yes, Quigley is not John Ryder. He's certainly he's certainly not Canelo. He's a quality opponent. He's a decent guy. I can give Eddie better names from the fight. Eddie, if you want me to get you better names that he can fight, I, I, I can do that. Would you guys be happy with Shane Mosley Jr.? Because it, it's Shane Mosley Jr. and Quigley for a 50-50 fight. Would you be happy with Rosado? Would that I mean Beck the Bully would destroy him? Right? Do we agree on that? That Beck the Bully would destroy Gabe. Uh, that he Beck the Bully, who got iced by Gabe Rosado, would stop Berlanga. flat out. Stop him. Can, can we agree on that? He, he like. <laughs> 
Berlanga is so far from being a world championship level fighter. He's 10 fights away from it. Like, he's not even he's not even close. But y'all want him to step in with who and get steamrolled? Like you you just want to see Berlanga get steamrolled because you were upset that you fell for the hype show? Let me know what you guys think. Leave your thoughts, comments below. Please like, share, and subscribe. Follow 3D Boxing, 3D Boxing Blog. Uh, follow us on all forms of social media. Quick hits, like I said, comes at you every day, 8 to 10 minutes a day. Please also subscribe to the other channel, Texas Boxing Scene on YouTube. Texas Boxing Scene. Uh, all proceeds go to Autism Research and Recovery. It is April 10th, 2023. Uh, from Texas to the world, thank you and God bless. Don't miss a tweet, post, story, or video. 3D Boxing is on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Hit the subscribe button now to stay inside the ring.